What's really, really cool today is that we're gonna go now to look at a traditional to matia. So if you wanna talk about how will your experience differ from where it would say in North America or perhaps in Europe, there is nowhere that you're gonna find a house like this. For a lot of people, just the mere mention of going apartment hunting runs chills down their spine. They hate it, it's a pain, they don't wanna do it. And then there's a group that really, really enjoys it. I'm in the latter group and I'm about to do it here in Japan. Usually you're going through a company or at least finding a listing online to see where it is that you're gonna to tour and then you sign through a company. I'm gonna show you guys specifically what companies I would use and we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. So we're gonna give you guys a glimpse into exactly what is it like to go apartment hunting and to find a new home in Japan. Drew, the silent protagonist behind the camera, has actually been looking at a number of properties around Kyoto lately and so has a good relationship with one of the local realtors. They were kind enough to show us a number of different properties ranging from old to new, big to small, the first of which was high in a tower building. All right guys, so we made it up to the 10th floor. That is the first apartment that we're looking at here. So yeah, I've never actually had tatami before, that's kind of cool. Also absolutely essential, you'll need this in every single home, but having the air conditioner, obviously that's huge. And then you're gonna wanna have enough space for all your clothing as well. And then if you're a person who really, really loves to cook, considerations are given in the kitchen as well. And you actually get, wow, it is a wild view from out here. That's incredible. And it, that's actually really cool. You can see the train down on that side. We're gonna show you guys looking over the other way. That is a that is where I've been previous, or you will see after in the video, the beautiful garden that kind of sits um, in one of the major sections in Kyoto. Heading over to the kitchen, we have the obviously we got the vent here, which is great. You got something above there. That's actually a pretty medium-sized sink, as far as I've seen when I've gone around. And then in this corner here we would set up our refrigerator and then depending on the size of your workstation you could probably put it right here in the bathroom that you're going to find here there's something that's unique to japan this is only in japan i've never seen this back in canada not my personal preference and it happens where they'll put the the toilet actually in the same room as the shower but if you're on a budget, it can be a way that you're actually going to save some money because that often drops the price of your rent when you're looking at places. Okay guys, so we're heading to the, the second location now. And this one is more significant. I believe it's a 2DK. That's what we're looking at here. This will give you a great sense of, if you're gonna go a little bigger, what you can expect. And lo and behold, it's significant. So the kitchen is much larger. There is a gas range stove over here that you've got. Interesting that it comes with this. That's not something you should always expect. When I've moved into different apartments, you've often had to get your own, what are these called, Drew? Kondo. Thank you. <laughs> Have to get those yourself and your washing machine, but if you purchase them, then you're saving money when you move to the next location, you can bring yours in. Under my feet now is something I rarely find in Japan, which is carpet. It's always, it's always wood flooring or it's tatami, but I never ever usually find carpet. So that's kind of like, this is a weird nostalgic feel. This reminds me of being back on Vancouver Island. So this would be your, your kitchen. Then you've got perhaps a master bedroom there. And then if you're baller deluxe, this could either be your second bedroom or if you wanted to turn this into an office, it'd be a great space for an office. And what is really cool here is that we'll maybe perhaps do a little tour around the outside that we have a connected balcony. So you can come out here. I can't moonwalk, but I can try. And you've got both rooms connected by the balcony, which is awesome. And we'll take the camera off of me for one moment. Drew, fast pan over there. We've got Kyoto Tower. So that's really, really cool. Obviously the most important thing you're searching for is a house. But second in importance to that is the resources that are available so you can find the best house for you. There's a couple of online web portals that you can go to. There's homes.co.jp, there's sumo, to use, mo.jp, and then there's able to. 
And these are useful for a number of different services. So first and foremost, you can narrow down location. You could look, for example, whether by station or you could look by address and you can figure out where you want to live. Following that, you can then search on these sites by preference of things that you want in your home. And the additional service on top of that is that from these portals, you can book your viewing of the apartment. Welcome, welcome, hello. So this is especially cool to be in here, guys. This is the inside track because of Drew. This building is being renovated right now, so most of the time you can't come in and look at a place like this because they want to finish the renovations before you get to see anything else in here. But Drew's the man, spoke with the realtor, he was like, sure, we can get you the key because Drew's awesome. So let's take you guys on a tour. This is really, really well designed from my preferences personally. So we got in here the island kitchen. And the island kitchen lets you make what you wanna make and also be social with people while you're hanging out with them. To give you guys a few critical stats, this is after like building management fee, it's about 68,000 yen. And the initial costs which are involved with like uh, guarantor fees, brokerage fees, all that stuff. If you wanted to have something like a workspace, I was thinking if I were to set up my workspace, you would set it up here, and that would be one place for you to be. As I said, make sure you always bring a tape measure. We tape measured that out, everything works. And then you come into the master bedroom. <laughs> we got wall to wall here, so you can see you're gonna have great light in this room. Uh, the closet, which we were looking into as well, I was talking about the bar. We already got that pre-installed in this place. It's getting check marks all over the place. We got a fantastic balcony out here. So you can see Japan, for whatever reason, often doesn't have uh, drying machines. So you can see there's the contraction outside here that you would put a bar across. And this bar here would allow you to hang your clothes and take care of your laundry. And then you got a, a view straight through to the mountains. And I'd like to show you on the other side of the building, incredible view looking over to the river. You can't quite see the river, but you can see the mountains on the other side. There's a lot in the location of this one, which is exceptional, which I really, really, really like. So this is the laundry room slash shower room. You'd set your laundry up here. We were talking about how maybe you need a gas stove. I actually already have purchased my, my laundry machine, so I'm just gonna move mine in. I gotta bring it up the stairs or whatever in the elevator, but that's where you put this. And then I'm just gonna let Drew peek in to the shower here. I don't need to stand in there, but just so you guys can see it, that is the shower. And this is one where you have the, the hand basin as well in the shower, which sometimes that's a separate unit, sometimes it's together. But really, really importantly for me, again, we're talking about preferences I have, first place or one of the places that we looked at today they had the toilet in the shower which is pure caveman to me but if you want to save a few bucks that's something you can do this one let drew just take you guys into it they've again separated it so if that's a concern you have and it's a concern that i have this place has it as well okay guys so talking about an experience in Japan uniquely that you're gonna have when you go looking for apartments what's really really cool today is that we're gonna go now to look at a traditional to matia so if you want to talk about how will your experience differ from where it would say in North America or perhaps in Europe there is nowhere that you're gonna find a house like this allow me now to spirit you away this is the inside of the Machia style location. First thing that I get really, really excited about coming into the kitchen area is this, this characteristic of Japanese homes that I, I could talk for hours about. This is the, the interior garden that you'll find in the Machia. And in this location we have, not sure the type of tree that it is, but the way that this connects to you, even whilst in your home, to the seasons and the way that they change and, and your connection with that is awesome. You're coming into this area now where they've got the, the washroom right here. We have the oteirai right here. That's, you know, just a polite way to say the bathroom. We have the, the sink behind me here where you could brush your teeth and everything like that. And I'm going to let Drew go into this room here. 
What's cool about it is the linoleum style reminds me of Sentos. Sentos being more the kind of salt of the earth location if you want to go to an onsen where a lot of them say for example will have rules about tattoos and that you can't have them in an onsen but at many Sentos they will allow you to and so anyone can go there. Let you guys get a glimpse of this. It's some, it's some cool character. Some real depth to it too. Goes right down. I like that a lot. Great look, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yes, yes. The stairs. So if I could level one criticism at every machia that I go into, it's usually that these stairs are so steep. This is a drawback characteristic that they're really dangerous. There was some movie recently on Netflix that was showing how somebody, when they went up the stairs, they slipped and fell. And I don't know if I could, could I go as far as to say common Drew, or is this something that happens, you know, it happens with- Oh yeah. Frequency. Okay, thank you. So let's head up guys, let's check out the rooms. Super steep, you can see the angle. The incline, that's the word, I remembered the word. Okay, so I get really, really excited for this. It's, I can just imagine if I were better at calligraphy being in this room as it were spring and the first leaves were starting to grow from the tree and you would be next to that and you could mark your experience in life. And then we have perhaps actually, no, definitely the, uh, the larger of the two bedrooms. And this then, a very much a community thing you're you're having to be considerate this would be a quiet neighborhood you're not going to have too many raucous parties because you can see literally across into your your neighbor's uh, porch on the other side well there you have it what it's like to search for an apartment to go house hunting in japan i leave for kyoto tomorrow i did find a place very very excited to move in there and what a huge change this will be. I've actually lived in the countryside the entire time that I've lived in Japan. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you tune in for the many more videos to come, but that is all for now. The clock has run out. Catch you in the next one.